Hey, good morning, good afternoon. Wherever you may be on the planet, this is a good day for Atlantic Discourse. Yes, second year anniversary, we made it just like today, just like uh, yesterday. I can never forget that day, our very first episode. We'll do not drop it, do it to prison. Well, he's not going to prison yet, yeah, but it looks like he <laughs> looks like he looks like he it doesn't even look like he's going to run for president, you know? Yeah. So, but as soon. you know, here yeah, but we don't waste time. We just go for the jugular always, you know? We embrace the fact always. We disseminate positive news in the world field with a lot of bad news. We yes. try and match both worlds. Third world, first world. We just go for the fact. That's why this special episode is titled and your podcaster experience with podcasters. So I have two fantastic guests here. I don't know any other two people anywhere on the planet that can do justice to this topic, apart from Kenny and Femi. They've been there with me from the very beginning. And these are guys that, I mean, I just told them by recording and they're here. So I'm going to allow you to introduce yourself. I know no matter how well I do it, there's always something to miss. Them. So let me start with Kenny. Kenny, please tell us about yourself. Tell our listeners and viewers. Hey, I'm the to, it's to say that this is going to be the first episode of Atlanta Discuss on YouTube. So, okay. Episode number one! So, Kenny, tell us about yourself, man. In the podcast, what they call me, Phil with O. You know, that's my <laughs> podcast name. Long story short, though, I, I come from the technology field. I uh, worked most of my life in government contracts. I quit my job, moved to Nigeria to start an airline business. I got destroyed, and uh, when I got back, I had a period where I had to figure out what's my next move, you know, what do I want to do next? And I, and I used that time, I mentioned it was almost a period of a year where I could not find a job. Um, so I was trying to figure out what my next move is, what my next life was going to be. And I started thinking back at things that I really enjoyed doing when I was a kid. Uh, so I started thinking about, hey, I did like finance. I was a pre-accounting student before I came to the States. Because back in Nigeria, between your GSS3 and the SS1, you got to figure out what you wanted to do. So I said, okay, I'm going to do finance. So as I started doing finance, I started trading, learning more about the market and getting more in the finance space. I started learning about money, finance, and trading, and the economy, and everything else. And luckily enough, I was blessed to have a mother that was a teacher. And I realized that there was just a lot of lack of information in the space. So I said, hey, why not transfer that knowledge as well? Because I've always thought all true high school, undergrad, grad school, most of my job was never like a Burger King, McDonald's kind of job, it was always being a teacher. Actually, my first job was a teacher, I teach geometry in high school. So I was like, okay, I'm going to start teaching people, teaching people online. So we got into it, so I got a, I got a partner, his name is Che, known as Brazen, and we started teaching people about fighters, talking about the market. Next thing you know, we started realizing that the market is quite volatile and the political. And we started learning about Bitcoin, and then next thing you know, we're teaching the space about cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, and so on and so forth. So yeah, that's how that my journey started in the podcast space. It's been uh, what two, three years now. Uh, life is going great. Wow, 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 wow! That's that's fantastic. Femo, <laughs> Sabi <Sabine> Nation. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. I'm saying this. Femo's uh, podcast with Amazi, Sabi Nation. I find it most intriguing. Yes, I think it's the most underrated, undervalued <laughs> podcast in the world. I'm telling you, it's a beautiful English. The content is awesome. Let let me you do the talking. Don't let me, you know. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, my name is uh, Femi Ajiboye. Like Kenny, I am also from the IT background, uh, been a web developer, UI, UX designer for several years. But during COVID, my friend and I would always call each other every day and we're talking about everything and anything. And one day I just told him, hey, look, all these things we're talking about, let's not be, you know, sharing all these ideas and talking about all these things, you know, between the two of us. And he also has always wanted to be on the radio. I said, oh, since you want to be on the radio, uh, there's this thing called podcast that I'm, you know, a huge fan of. I have so many podcasts that I listen to. So I told him, let's start one ourselves. And so we did. And it's been great. We are currently in our season four and it's been awesome. We talk about everything and anything. And the name of our podcast is How Nasiam. And like Adi mentioned, it's a Pigeon English. So uh, since we, you, we are speaking Pigeon English, so we get to say all sorts of things and, you know, just express ourselves in the freest way that we want to, want to be. 
Yeah, and that's it. Outside my IT job and outside the podcasting, I'm a husband, a father, and uh, I love to teach kids. Oh, wow. Yeah. We have, we have that in common. I love teaching kids too, especially yeah. boy child. But I tell yes. you, yeah, for me, I started podcasting, right? Most weekends, you know, I have a lot of buddies in Nigeria. You know, they always had one anger out of the other. These are guys in their issues. They're always arguing. Uh, Croatia this, Ukraine that, da, da, da. and I was there in Atlanta. So every weekend, you know, my phone will ring. They'll be arguing somewhere in Surulina in Kenya, like uh, Balu. That war, uh, Second World War, Hitler, how did Hitler die? I will not be explaining on the phone. <laughs> These are serious, all the people who uh, are story. You will not call me that Balu will know because that's my nickname. So I'll not explain it to them in, in detail. So, so my first one, I said, Dad, how do you know all these things? I said, look at you, how old are you? Then I think uh, he's 19 now. So it was about uh, 17 there about. I said, at, at age 10, I knew the capital of all the countries in the world. No Google, no Yahoo, nothing. We just had the atlas. We don't look at it that I can draw the map of God, do this, do this, blah, blah. He said, he said, Dad, if you know so much, why don't you just put it in a book or talk about it. I said, I, you know, I don't like writing. He said, but Dad, <laughs> just start talking about it. It, it, it. It's fun. You know, I said, okay, I'll do something about it. So so I remember like a month later, there was a serious argument. It was obvious that they were even fighting in that, in that place. And they, and they called me and so I arbitrated again. I said, no, that um, uh, Mauritania was part of, uh, I mean, Western Sahara was, was had been administrated by Morocco. That was the basis of the argument. You know, so I told them the capital, the country, the president at that time, and all that. My son said, Dad, we have to do something about this. You know, the following weekend, he just brought me a microphone. He said, Dad, you have to, you just have to talk about it. And, you know, then I, I wasted another two weeks. And everybody just said, Look, you have to do this thing. I like, how can I just sit down and start talking I like that? And <laughs> I just woke up 1 a.m. one day. You know, of course, the issue was Trump. Everyone was talking about Trump, you know, that kind of thing. So I just, picked up a pen and a pen. I just wrote down all the cases Trump was going through at that time. And I think I listed almost 12 or 14 on, off uh -huh. my head. You know? I'm like, ah, okay. I just connected. Blah, 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 blah. I, that's how I did my, my first video. Uh, first episodes. First episode. and I, I wow. never looked back from then. And, yeah. and trust me, I, I, I think for three of us, one thing we have been common in that we had a very good foundation. You know, so I don't think it's very common these days. Because people just, they don't do a lot of research, but a lot of those things are foundational. Yeah. They yeah, believe yeah. us, you understand. That's why sometimes when we run into crisis, we, it's that foundational knowledge that we don't But let me ask yeah. you guys, let me start with Femi this time. Mm -hmm. Wait, what made you, I mean, I understand you still us how you ended up in it. What keeps challenging me with podcasting? I mean, we're talking content, because I know I've listened to, I don't think there's a podcast you guys are, I'm sure I've listened to 80%. Let me be modest. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so diverse, colorism, you know. I, I think I was part of uh, the Afghanistan one. I love yes. that. I like listening yes. to that over and over again. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I wasn't even the one talking, you know, that kind of thing. So they're so diverse. And, you know, how what inspired that? I mean, how do you get your content? And what challenges do you face doing all this? Because we just listen to it. People don't really know what effort goes into all that. So, Femi, let me Yeah, I'll start with uh, what inspired it. I think I'll say what inspired it the most was the fact that I kind of found that we've, we have found ourselves in a place where people no longer have conversation. It's just we, it's now we versus them. You know, that's number one. It's we versus them. Any Bring up any topic. It's always we versus them. You know, I was... I think I was discussing the issue of abortion with somebody and, you know, and when you discuss it with this person and that person and that person, you listen to them, you see that it's the same narrative over and over, recycled and recycled, you know, there's no, there's no flesh to it. There's no substance to their argument. It's always we versus them, this versus this, this versus that. There's no explanation there are no facts most of it is fake news you know all that stuff so when I, my friend and i were discussing I, I can't remember what exactly we were talking about and we started kind of digging out these facts and then we went back to hey look back in the days when when we hear something and there's a conversation ongoing right and we don't know anything about it 
what we do is we go out to research, to read more about it, know more about it, and then form our own opinions before we start engaging in any form of uh, conversation at all. So this was what inspired us to kind of start this podcast. And from the name of the podcast, you see the name of our podcast is How Nasiam. That's what do you think? What is your opinion, right? It's not we. I'm not asking we versus them or good versus evil. I'm saying this concerning this topic that we are discussing. What do you think about it? What do you know about it? So it's. I think it's, it was inspired by the fact that we don't really have that good conversation anymore. And I think you also asked, like, what has been the challenges, you know? Before, yeah. Yeah, before I go into the challenges, I'll talk about, like, how we do our research. Just like what I was saying. One of the things that for each episode that we, or each topic that we talk about, it could be my co-host, Mazi. It could be that he's the one that would just come and say, oh, I was just reading something in the news. And, you know, we just started a discussion and said, you know what, we should talk about this. We'll give it a topic. And then we just read more about it and then we start we just sit in front of the mic and start talking about it you know just conversational you know just so that anybody that listens to what we are saying we are not saying oh this is the good thing or this is the bad thing or this is how to go about it we are just putting all the facts on the table and then we are asking our audience to contribute and you know give their own opinion it's better that everybody forms their own opinion as far as challenges is concerned i would think that one thing that has been a challenge for us is time you know uh because of the fact that we want to pride ourselves with giving out factual information and well-researched information research takes time and both of us we have like a nine to five and for all this put together i think time content development takes time you know so that's that i would say that's the most uh challenging part like you said we come from the kind of background that we would you know when we want to do anything we'll go for it and we want to make sure that we are putting out something quality there so any everything that has to do with you know putting out the podcast no big challenge but juggling that time with every other thing around us has been the uh number one challenge for us wow awesome Awesome. Like I said, it's just about foundation. Well, I'm still your host for Atlanta Discuss TV now. We have first rest edition on YouTube, our second anniversary, and I'm with the best you can ever get anywhere. Femi and Kenny. Femi and Jibuya and Kenny and Woshika. They're both podcasters. They're both broadcasters. They're all both IT savvy people. They're extremely creative people, and I'm so honored that they're my guests today. So, like I said, Kenny. You are also very multi-talented, but everything has its own challenges. So what's your inspiration? What are your what are the issues you grapple with? Just the same question I asked them all. You know, on our show we say stagnation. <laughs> and then and then we'll go with champion. You know, you, you, you don't become a champion without consistency. So, you know, two years of consistency, this is what you get, right? And then you continue to grow and the cowboy champions. Amen. So uh, the the process of becoming a champion, yeah, I think I think that's that's what I will call it. You know, and you, I, how the hell do you even think about becoming a champion? Champion mentality is not a joke. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just work. <laughs> it's just hard work. You know, family man, you got kids, you got a day job, and then you got a business to run. This is not this is not something that you do just for the fun of it. Like oh. You know, I feel like exercising today, so I'm not going to exercise tomorrow. No, you do this thing every day of the week. Like literally, you, the fact that you're not recording does not mean that you're not thinking about recording. You're reading the articles, you're researching, you're thinking of how you can connect the dots. Because a lot of the times, people sometimes, you know, say you're reading the book, you're reading the book, you're reading the book. Are you reading the book to connect the dots to learn something? Or are you just reading the book for the sake of it? And what you start realizing, especially if you create a podcast, is that you start relating items from either one news or a book that you read, and you're like, oh, wow, there's a big relationship between those two factors. So for us, it literally started as we get into the finance space, we're reading about the finance, but you will notice that as you read the article, right, or you read the news, today they might say the market is going to crash. Tomorrow they say, oh, the market's going to be bullish. Inconsistency. You are studying the market trends. You actually took a class learning how to trade, spent eight thousand dollars on that. And you're looking at the trends. You look at the flows and the and the market in the, and the charts. 
And the, the price action is supposed to flow a certain way, at least 100% of the time, you think. And then somebody gets on the news and just says, blah, blah, and tanks your entire investment. You know, then you start saying, what the hell is going on in this space? So you start loading, but you realize a lot of people do not know this. So we'll say, you know what, why not find a way to get this knowledge out to the people, but also support it with information, data, and factual, just like Femi was saying. So what we'll do now is exactly what Femi said as well, is it's a lot of reading, doing your own time, man. Sometimes you have to be selfish, which is not good, but you have to be selfish with your time because that's how you acquire all this knowledge. But how do you depict or share that knowledge with the people? I think that's the biggest challenge. We're still working on overcoming that because people now have this rabbit uh, brain mentality where they just want to tick up information in one minute, 60 seconds or less. And it's fun for big money, but for, the, for a show like ours or like a show like Owl and ASEAN, you can't get that in one minute. You need to have that conversation. You need to know, you need to learn, you need to see what really is going on. And I think that's why we are different. You guys edit, you edit yeah. by yourself. At the beginning, we used to pay for edits. Man, it was expensive. Oh. So, and we're still editing now. We're back to editing um, because of quality. Um, but we, 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 find, we really find ways to, to cut the cost. We've, we've literally add a new team member to the team now. And uh, that's something a lot of people talk about. Podcast is not easy, man. It costs you money, it costs yeah. you time. Yeah. So you gotta, you gotta pay for software. You gotta pay for people to do editing. You gotta pay for audio, video. I mean, there's a lot of things, man. Hosting, yeah, hosting fees, list yeah. goes on. Yeah. yeah. Flyers, sometimes flyers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. To, to, to promote Graphics yourself. And all that. Yeah. 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 You, have, you have to, you have to promote yourself. You have to, that's part of your budget. Yeah, I didn't fall into that trap of outsourcing editing, right? One of the reasons is because when I want to do something, some certain things just have to be done in a certain way. And the moment I tried my hands with uh, uh, editing and I could edit to the quality that I really want to hear, that was it. I already had someone on the ground that was ready to edit. We already negotiated and said, you know, he told me how much he was going to be charging. I was cool with it, but when I did it myself and it was good, that's it. That's it. Sound check, side check. <laughs> Let me tell you guys a secret, yeah? I don't know how to edit. So it was onerous on me to get it right the first time, the only time. So I, I always put more work preparing. I mean, sometimes when I'm recording, you'd be shocked at what's in front of me. Sheet of papers, two laptops, everything. I'm locked. I, usually I record around 1, 2 a.m. Everybody is asleep, you know, that kind of thing. And sometimes I pray for like five minutes before I go start. You understand? <laughs> yeah. And when the out, I go. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I, you know that kind of thing, you know? But so, but for some reason, 99% of the time I get it right. I've done some recording that I wasn't happy about, you know, I'm like, oh. So I've had like three episodes that after recording, even though I uploaded it, I was even scared to listen to it myself because I thought I didn't do it. But those are the recordings that people call me like, ah, that's a good one. Oh, really? I don't know where to listen. To yeah. It, you know, for me, content might not really be a problem. It would do, I mean, for example, I have like content line up for like two months now, you know, right now. And and I know that even though I churn out weekly, it's looking like I wish I could be churning out every day now because there's a new event, you know. For example, they just finished NATO summit. There's a lot I have or Ukraine, which I think I should do this week. Now there's this, they're going to indict Trump this week now. You understand? Now there's a lot going on in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. You know, I did a lot of the Ruto and Udiga, yeah, a lot of the Ruto Udiga election. There are already demonstrations in Kenya. So what am I going to do this week? So it's looking to me like the consistency shouldn't even be weekly again. It should be daily. But how do you create time? Like you said, what are the day job, you know? Yeah. How do you create time? I have, I've done flyers for two months and I'm talking to you, you know, there's one I will have, I should have released like a month or six weeks, but I found out the nation, Joe Biden. Well, I seriously think Joe Biden has to be acting like a father for the nation. You know, it's not that physically strong, but he's been acting like a father. So for me, those are the challenges, things change. So when you talk about it, I don't bother myself. I give it the best shot the first time and that's it. But 
something about consistency is that because you're recording all the time, you discover that as time goes on, you don't really need much editing. When we started, I would take an hour to edit, remove this noise, remove this scratch, remove uh, this, and there are some certain things like, you know, those things that we keep repeating, like sometimes, Mazi would be like, um, um, so I want to remove all the, all that, yeah, um, so, you know, <laughs> elms, 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 like, like, like uh, elms, elms, and then all the, you know, you know, you know, I'm trying to remove all that. But as, you know, episodes after episode, it I just discovered that, you know, away. once, once we are done, I just put background music hmm, and then, but you know what, I, I'm starting to think that. That over perfection is not even what people are looking for. No, no, no. it's the content. One thing, yeah, yeah, they don't even see those things. That's what they don't those things. That's, 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 that's the truth. That's the truth. And all that. Yes. But yeah, I cannot hear this stuff though. The most annoying part is when you record and then you go and look for your recording. It's either not there or the audio is gone. I think I've had those experiences. Yeah, yeah, that put to me. Once, once. Like, bro, that was too good to be gone. Yeah, it happened to me once. Uh, and that, you know, I use Anchor to record. So it took me like three episodes to have a grasp of the app. You know, if you record, no matter what, it will always come, you always find it. I didn't know that. Sometimes it takes like two hours or three hours before it comes and all that. So I actually thought that particular episode was done and all that. But let me ask you guys, like, clearly you guys are veteran in broadcasting, not just podcasting because of your background, your IT savvy, you have to take my account know-how. So let me ask, what's next? I mean, I don't know the only thing consistent about life is change. Yeah. You know, life, I know it's an undulating play, that was what we all want more, we all yearn for more. Now we've been podcasting, we are good with developing content, scholarship is improving every day. You won't believe it, I have so that should be Rwanda because I did something on Kagame. Because when I use Instagram to people, you know, I did something about the monarchy, monarch. So British people, white people, original people, this time follow me on Instagram. So let me ask you guys, what's next? What's the next level for you? Let me start with Freddie. Well, um, I don't know if it's because of, again, our background. We don't want to stay too long at one level. You know, we always want to push the envelope and push the boundary. Like we say it uh, in Pigeon Zoo. Mugu, they shift the po- go post. <laughs> they shift the go post, go back like that, you know. You know, so I think for How Now Siam podcast, the next level is to kind of consolidate and try to monetize. Mm. We've been doing all this personally, you know, spending our own money. Our podcast is not cheap. You can do it not so expensive, but it's not cheap and it's not free. That's just the truth. You know, you're still going to spend money. And we've been spending our money and... Um, We've not engaged in any form of, you know, like subscription, patrons, advertising and all that stuff. So I think um, the next level for us, because we, ha- we have the content and the content as it has, you know, proved that content is not an issue for us. Quality of our product, our quality of our podcast is not an issue. The kind of topics we talk about, they are not topics that will get us cancelled. But we were still able to pass as much information, factual information as possible. So I think the next phase for us is, you know, try to monetize and see how it goes. For Sabi Nation and uh, How Nasian Podcast, that's the next level. Kelly, what about you? Yeah, you know, I try to make sure that everything that I do is not something like, it's just like a hobby. Like businesses are not supposed to be an hobby. So when we started out at this, we saw it as a business, not just as a business to be profitable, but a business to educate and inform people, at least to make some impact in the market space. So for me, when I think about where Stack is going, the same thing Femi is talking about Sabination is that we would like to get to the point of monetization, which is not easy. Uh, The monetization process on YouTube, on Instagram, now on Twitter, by the way, uh, and I know Spotify also have monetization. It's a challenge uh, because sometimes the people that are listening to your content are the people that really want to know stuff, like that, that, and that need it. Not the folks that are just surfing social media for that one minute little quick clip, right? Ed Manners. Ed Lighters, right? Which, for those of us that are really into what we're doing, we're not here for chasing the news and hitting the biggest, latest news and latest noise. It's actually what matters in your life. What impact are we making in your life? Every day. 
And a lot of those people are not on social media as much as we've been there. But when they are, they come to channels like ours. So the challenge is that you have to break into the space of the everybody else and those that are really serious about making their lives better. So uh, I think investing more in marketing the channel so that people can see us creating the short videos because that is what is the, the market is asking for. So doing a lot more of those, uh, which we've spent a lot of time on lately. Uh, this is kind of what is next for us. And then, you know, I'm already in conversations with Femi and you about the next step is that, you know, at some point, you have to get overcome that fear of, okay, you know, how do we, how that multiply in the fix? How can the black nations work together? How can the lions work together? Um, so we are working on something new in terms of the same thing that we're doing in the space, maybe working together. I do see an opportunity there, but I'll, you know, look forward to working with you guys on those new initiatives. But in the meantime, uh, SPAC is just going to focus on doing what we do increasing our quality, spending more money, unfortunately, apparently, you know, they always say, oh, oh, spend money, to, to make money, you gotta spend money, my friend. Now, so, mm-hmm. what's, <laughs> what is stupid? <laughs> you know, so, you know I mean, let, me, let me just chip it. For me, it, it started like a hobby. I was just pouring out what I had in my head and all that. But after a year, I saw that there was a lot of money to be made. <laughs> I actually got involved in a radio station telling us about that. You really do it well there. I'm involved in one right now, you know, and I'm doing it for them mere effortlessly. 30 minutes every day doesn't work maybe because I, what happened previously. But for me, next level is, for example, what we're recording now. This is our first YouTube episode. I think uh, audio is not, it's not, it's good, but it's good to, to make sight and sound. Yeah. I think it's good to be. To, to be represented on works platform. You know, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you, if Spotify has worked well for me. I like Spotify a lot. Alcohol has worked well for me. It's really, you know, but at the same time, you know, I, I, I think right now that we have to monetize. We have to invest in advert, you know. I've, I've listened to, I mean, without the shelf sounding in modest, I've listened to podcasts that you know, even have 60% quality of what we do have. And they have, they are making a lot of money, trust me, you know, yeah. but, you know, and like he said, it's your audience before you have a niche market, niche audience, and they fall for you. It's a lot, you know? So now my next question to you guys, I have two more questions back to So you're not a art of yeah. Let me start with Kenny. Kenny, what's your favorite podcast? Tell me your three favorite podcast, apart from Stack Nation. I know you love Stack. I mean, you're... <laughs> So podcasts, right? Not YouTube mm-hmm. channels, right? So I was... well, that's all. That's in broadcasting. What are three things you like listening to? You know? I like. So I'm mean, also I'm also the lookout for how we gonna see them because um, that's for for me and my Sabine. Yes, the, the reason why is this, for, especially for that one, right? It's my time to connect back to Africa, connect back to Nigeria, you know. Because, like, I've been in America for so long, so I don't speak broken English. I don't hear your words uh, a lot. So, like, I want to be able to, like, connect back and also relate and, you know, remember my child, old and all that good stuff. And then also gain and gain knowledge and information from that. Oh, your wife is a huge fan, too. Yes. <laughs> wife is a huge fan. She can't wait. So she likes the manly, sexy voice. Those two are <laughs> wiping out. Just to do it. <laughs> oh, so that's that, that one. Oh. And then the other ones are mostly uh, YouTube channels, uh, which I don't necessarily even listen to. I just put them on autoplay. Um, one of them is, uh, what's his name? The Indian, actually, I've never listened to them lately. I've been just focusing on us lately. But the uh, Indian guy, um, Jesper, Just Brink, uh, what is his name? Just Brink. Um, It talks a lot about finance, a lot of stuff that I've known ever since high school, college. But it knows how to like relate and explain it that over and over and over and repeat it over and over again. Uh, I'm just like, well, this guy does it really smooth that easy. Like, I think we're doing the same thing as doing, but I'm a farther past that niche now that I'm more into the Bitcoin blocks, uh, blockchain space now. That I have to find a way to still take that knowledge from the traditional fighters and bring it into into the folks that are interested in the in the blockchain space. So that's one guy that I think catches my attention. There's a guy called Coin Bureau. He is very into crypto, but I'm not a big crypto guy. 
But the guy spent a lot of time. He has a tin. He can afford to pay a tin because he got into the space a lot much earlier. And the team does a lot of research. So when the team does the research, they basically, like, let's say a new law came out, multiple pages. We get to go read the article and interpret it for us to read. So I used this opportunity to figure out what the latest there is in the space as well. Go read up on them, but not rely too much on that. But also I have a ton of other, like I have a, an app on my laptop. It's called the Fridley. Uh, Fridley. It basically feeds me news from a bunch of other news locations. So instead of me trying to connect to one podcast or one YouTube channel, Fridley feeds me a bunch of news information. So I pick which one I want to read. Then I just read it or have it audio play it and I just listen to it. And when I'm not doing that, I have my audible and I'm just reading books. Oh, wow. Wow. I like it. <laughs> but whoa, we are back. Yes, yes, yes. So before we uh, started How Nassian podcast, I was like, I was and still is a very, very huge fan of podcast because podcasting gives you information. Like it just gives it to you raw and gives you time to process what you have heard and, you know, form your own opinion. So I've always been a very huge fan of podcasts. So it's hard for me to pick three bests, but he, 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 this is how I'm going to do it. Apart from listening to Atlanta Discourse, which I do all the time, and the reason is because you always talk about the things that I feel like I, I need to know more about it because you talk about ongoing discussions, right? So when I'm on, you know, we, are in, we belong to a common WhatsApp group, you know, and I have a lot of friends that are always talking about politics and especially international politics. So I always take from Atlanta discourse. I you know I was reminding you the other day that all these things happening in Ukraine from the very first episode where you talked about Ukraine, all these things, you predicted it that it was going to happen. Uh, I used the election, the Kenya election, when I was having some conversation with uh, some of my colleagues that are Kenyans and, you know, we have like an African group among my colleagues. And we're talking about Kenya politics. I was just dubbing everything I listened to from Atlanta because I was just telling them, do you know that Ruto? I didn't even know the names of the people contesting, but I just got to that. Is this? And if you remember when the result came out, I texted you that the result is out. Go check it out to go see who won, you know? You know, so yes, I listened to Atlanta Disco. And then on TikTok, I always follow Kenny's podcast. I follow it on TikTok because... I just love the way they cut like very, very important information, 30 seconds, drop it, boom. And sometimes I'm like, wow, you know, so this too is like my daily bread and butter. And then but to talk about other podcasts that I listen to every day till today, every morning, I listen to Countdown by Kit Oberman. It's like one of my favorite crazy people uh, when it comes to US politics. When it comes to facts about everything and everything, and one of the people that inspired how Nassim and the top, our topics and how we do our podcast is uh, Adam Reigns Everything, Adam Conaway. I, it's, I'm a huge fan of Adam Conaway. And then, and also, Every Little Thing uh, is one of those podcasts from Gimlet. Every Little Thing are Science Vessels. So Science Vessels talks about science versus other crazy stuff that people compare science with. And it deals with real facts, science. Before COVID happened, science vessels, they did a short play about a pandemic. Hmm. Everything they did in that play happened during COVID. It's not like, not like they were even expecting it. They just like simulated what would happen if there's a pandemic. And it was exactly what happened during COVID. And this episode came, I think this episode was in 2019, sometime in 2019 and 2020 full pandemic worldwide, you know. So those are the kind of podcasts that I listen to and they are my kind of uh, favorite podcasts. Well, for me, I, I've not been listening to Kenny for a long time, but I started like a week ago. Yeah. And I'm already a big fan already. <laughs> I'm already a big fan. You guys are crazy, man. You, the way you, you break talent and wisdom, and, and, you know. But Sabine Nation, it's as always the first day I heard it. I don't know. It was like it was like witchcraft for me. I like <laughs> I'm telling you, you know, the soundtrack at the beginning. But I'm telling you, you want to learn, you know, 
I mean, if you are listening, if you are watching us, I have never watched out in Nasia, or you've never listened to our Nasia podcast, go and listen to the show. You are missing. Try if you are Nigerian or you are from 80. If you can speak Fijian and Creole, but yeah, I'm telling you, you can relate to everything they say there. You know, so Sapine Show for me, I'll ask him podcast number one. Uh, I like Michael Cohen, Mayor Copper, mm. the, the Lord Trump's lawyer. Uh, I was really amazed that I just started podcasting, giving true life experience, because everything he says was true. You know, the right. things that, and that showed to what he revealed to me was that our life is a story. Yeah. You can, mm. you'd be shocked about what your know, daily experience you know, so, dude. Yes, yes. So, this guy, uh, he has not started recording. His name is Dr. Adisa. He has content too. I've, I've recorded him twice on my on my Atlanta discourse. I'm like encouraging him to go to podcasting. He is a doctor and he's a reservoir of knowledge. It's one thing to be a doctor. It's one thing to have the voice, the temerity, and that guy in that concert. There's one I'm listening to now, I forgot the name. They're just talking about drug dealers. Come here, I, I like... I like all those drug dealers. I mean, Pablo Escobar, this one, the El Chapo. I can't tell you everything about them. From Guayaquil. <laughs> like, I have the map of Latin America on my head, you know? So, but there's a podcast about of them now, Chapo, the Cali Cartel, and all that. And I'm sure on Netflix, we've all seen the knuckles, you know, and all that. So, but I read and listen to anything that attracts me. You understand? Mm-hmm. What they, I, I'm sure... Modestly, I read 20 pages of something every day. I'm, I'm very sure about that. But in the last two years, my biggest research has been on past African leaders. Mm. And it's getting clearer to me why Africa is in such a big mess. I've done mm. a lot. Well, Masing Bay, Adema, I've done a lot of research on Mobutu, Sese, Seko, Koko, Bendu, Asabaga, Ibrahim Babagida, Bacha, Jerry Rollins, even the frontline walls of Okuma. A big river, the middle of Sudan, even what's happening in Sudan now. I'm just looking at it that it is not looking too good for the for the continent. That's when I went to see countries like Nigeria doing what they're doing. About. Well, you guys have been wonderful. So let me give you my last question. That there, there are two questions actually. I'm going to ask this a political question. So okay, let me start with Shermie. Who's <laughs> who's going to be the next president of America? To buy the I'm going to give you the options. So don't worry. So I'm gonna make it difficult for you. <laughs> What's Joe Biden doing on the list? Uh, well, I'm, well, we shall see. I'm not gonna give you option. Let me just put it to you. It's a, I'm putting you on the spot. What's gonna be next for of, of the United States? Of the United States. After this time, it will sound like a conspiracy theory, but I think that Joe Biden will run. Mm-hmm. Uh, he will win, but I don't think he will finish his term. Nothing will happen to him. 2024 election. There's all these rumors that we are not even have a 2024 election. I, I no, we will. We will have a 2024 election. It's America. Yeah, we will have a 2024 election. We will. That's that one. Nothing can shake. We will have a 2024 Joe election. Biden has no chance. And I believe, and I believe that Joe Biden will win. But I feel like he might not finish the term. So we might have a President Harris. No. You know what? Joe Biden has been sick this whole time. They won't even let, they won't even give Harris a chance close to that podium, top less of making a presidential decision. I'm okay. We're not in Africa. It's, it's not Africa. Uh, everybody dropped there today. Harris takes over. Yeah. That's the thing. I know, but right now, I just say. Even, even if, even Biden's an old man, even if he has a seizure or something, he's incapacitated for five days. It's President, President Harris. 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 That, that, I, I have a very, very strong feeling. As far as uh, 2024 is concerned, there will be an election. Joe Biden, if he's on track as he is right now, he's going to contest and he's going to win. No. But he might not be able to. Okay, Kenny, who's the next president of America? Before I go to my last. Yes, so to make it easier on you guys, right? Joe Biden can pay off 18 million American school debt all he wants with, with his, uh, pay, uh, uh, his pay off school debt strategy. It's like a Nigerian president trying to buy a vote. That might eventually say get struck in that again. You cannot use taxpayers' money to pay other people's. I, I was responsible with my school loans. I pay off my debt without working two full-time jobs. Love story short. Biden and cocaine in the White House and all this other stuff that is going on, the war in Ukraine. What's the try to cover up in Ukraine? 
we all know what's going on. Trump has a better chance of winning, but they have distracted them with all these cop cases now. Trump, Trump will not get there. I know. I care that Trump won't try that anymore. Trump, I, are you not aware? I, are you aware that he has already been told to stop campaigning? I don't know. He's busy. He's, he's busy with lawsuits right now. The movement is indicted for the January 6th insurrection. Insurrection. Right. Right. That's the yeah. president. Yeah. He will not make it there. He won't. And there's no there's no Republican at all. I'm just no saying that can take that position. Okay. Before that, Trump has the better chance. Who is the Republican that will run? Uh, what's that Indian guy's name? Um, Vic Binky or whatever that really young Indian guy. That guy Vivek can that guy cannot win a local government election. Oh, that's so smart, man. He's smart. I'm not saying he's not smart. He's smart, he but he lost. He's he's, he's, he's smart, was, but he cannot was, win a local government election. There was, there okay, was, there was, I, I lost. There, there was there was there was a tourist space vote, mm. and those people were understand. You know who were the top top two? GFK, uh, and then Viv Vivek. Just okay. Before I ask my final question, let me give you my answer. I mean, I aligned with semi hundred percent. Joe Biden will win. He will spend two years. After two years, he will intentionally step down from Kamala. Exactly. That's, that's I, exactly what I think. I, yeah, yeah, I think, I think, and I think at the end of that second term, it will be uh, this woman that was going to run for what's her name in Georgia, the woman that they tried to be governor, the black woman, Sexy uh, Adams. Stacey, Stacey Abrams. Stacey Abrams. 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 Abrams will run in the primaries against Kamala. I think so. Now, I, there are other developments that will happen between now and then, but that's all my way. We'll probably talk about it in one of our other. I'm sure I'm going to bring it back here for somewhere. Now, so I think Biden will win. I think the Republicans will have. Sure that I, have fun. I, think, I think the difference now with the way America is, if you look at the majority, Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin. Yeah. They know when wherever those three states are tilted now is where you understand we know. Final question. Final historically, it's, it's, historically in America, we've never had two democratic uh, presidents one after the other. In the least, yeah, I mean, I, I, like it. I did say Kamala will win our own presidential term. Mm -hmm. It will only complete a Joe Biden second term. Exactly. And what I said is, Stacey Abrams will run against her in the presidential primaries of the Democratic Party. Since when Whatever did, happens after that, I don't know. Since when did the presidential election become eight years? It's four years, right? Four years. Yeah, no, we're talking about second time, Kenny. No, no. I don't know. Second time is not promised. <laughs> no. <laughs> Kamala will finish this. Biden will win, right? After the three years or thereabout, Biden step down. Kamala will finish the last two years. Now, she would naturally want to run for a breast. Mandate. Yeah, I'm saying in the Democratic primary, Stacey Brown will come out against her. Because the backers of Stacey and the backers of Kamala, they are two different set of people. You understand? If you notice, this woman, uh, the, the senator in, uh, from California, uh, uh, Diane Feinstein, you know she's very ill. She's not here yeah, very well. Mm -hmm. Now, if she steps down now, the governor, Gavin Newsom, is going to nominate somebody that does not favor... Uh, what's the name of that former speaker, the tough woman? Nancy Pelosi. Pelosi. The governor will nominate somebody the Pelosi group is not happy with because it's the governor that has the power. So yeah. Pelosi's of this world are totally for that, that fire start to finish that tenure so that they'll be able to produce an Adam Sheep to be a candidate. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted that fire start to stand down. Do you understand? But if she starts out today, Gavin Nielsen is going to nominate somebody, somebody else. Somebody else. So for some reason, of course, I, I think Adam Schiff will make a very good, a fantastic. No way. Adam Schiff is the biggest liar. Flip over. The, the political politicians lie. Exactly. That is exactly what is wrong. All, 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 all politicians lie. So Nigeria. Now let's go to Nigeria. I'm not going to talk to you. Okay. Let me start with any. Then, this is the interesting come conversation. Come on, we should keep going. Yeah. <laughs> See, the world is funny, right? It's obviously caught. I mean, there's a lot of rubbish going on in that country right now. You know, a lot. I mean, the case is in court. Rubbish is an understatement. Yeah, we well, don't know his real name, perjury, false and all that. Wait, no. okay, go to Ed. Do you think the court will do the right thing? Do you think there will be a military takeover? From your crystal ball, 
Can you tell us in one minute what you foresee happening? The hit ball, the crystal ball. Um, Nigeria might er erupt into a civil war if it cheats, if it holds the office. That's if what I think. Office. If Tinubu continues to hold the office and continue to be able to stick to the people through hyperinflation, through the dollarization, through the moving, uh, what you might call it, everywhere, left and right. Nigerians are so great. Man, my, my, uh, my WhatsApp is filled up with Kenya. I need money. <laughs> and it's not just you, everybody. Yeah. So, um, and if the court system fails, which I know, not that I feel, the Nigerian judiciary is extremely corrupt. I'm dealing with some court cases there right now. And money is all it takes. And uh, with the $800 million that a guy has went to borrow from the World Bank, to give is it five hundred thousand or five hundred million or fifty million to the judiciary? That's a shut up money. The eight thousand naira that is given every Nigerian every month for six months or twelve months that it was to do. That's a shut up money. I don't think eight thousand eight thousand naira is enough to shut up Nigerians, no matter how poor they are. That is uh, go to ifair come back money. <laughs> Nigerians in serious trouble. I'm concerned about my investments there. Well, oh yeah. Um, Nigeria. yes, I believe that the reason why Nigeria is not burning right now is because after the election, Peter will be said, everybody calm down and let me go to court. That's why Nigeria is not burning right now, because the obedience are the same people that backed and, you know, carried out the NSAS movement. You understand? So, and these are young people that are fed up. What we all saw in that election and how it played out and what is happening right now, Nigeria would have been on fire consistently. But Obi said, let me go to court. Now, if the judicial system don't do, if all these judges and all of them, the process does not work, which we, none of us, nobody trusts that system. Everybody knows that that system is dead. Even amongst them, to say it, I, w I saw an interview by Olisa Bakuba. I just think that this one is just indirectly, he doesn't want to say it because they are his colleagues, but he's directly saying that they are doing rubbish because these are people that go to other countries to set up their judicial system. Mm. They are seeing what is going on in Nigeria. So the la Nigeria is hanging on a thread, and that's the judgment from that court. If that judgment does not go the way of the people, not that we are trying to influence it because we are seeing all the evidence and we are following every day what is happening in the court. If that judgment does not come true, like Kenny said, Nigeria, so, we might not have a, a Nigeria anymore. I think we I don't have. have. I'm going to agree with you, but I'm going to say it in my own, put it in my own way. I think, first of all, I'm, I'm ashamed you know, that a man with the pedigree of what well, actually we have made it to the presidency in the first place. A man with no real name, too many points. So he said, he said, he said, said pedigree. Do we give that the pedigree? <laughs> well, it's pretty, like I said, I mean, <laughs> where is it pedigree? Is to be negative or positive? <laughs> yes. But true. Because it's already a positive thing. You mm -hmm. If you have many, if, if you have the best arm robber with the best forger, you have a pedigree for points, you know? <laughs> I mean, he, he, he has the map of reliability all over him, you know? Mm. And I'm shocked that people that should know, that should know better, you know, well, and it has defined friendship for me in so many, it has really allowed me to see people from a different point of view. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've come to realize that what the Catholic Church did in Latin America, Brazil, mm -hmm. Libya, Ecuador, Paraguay, the Catholic Church in Libya and all those countries, you know, look at what they did in Poland when uh, Carol Wojcicki, or John Paul II, became Pope. They liberated Poland from communism. So it, it does beat my imagination that with the redeems of this world, the winner's chapters of this world, the matting of fire of this world, a the parties, they cannot influence the Nigerian trajectory to a positive. I'm not saying they should they should force a revolution. I'm mm -hmm. not saying that. They should be able to at least on the pulpit say the truth and that enlighten people. Enlighten yes. People. Enlighten people. <laughs> Tell them the truth. The Catholic Church has more scandals than any church in the world, but they always won't be here. The, the whole world, the Catholic Church, they always won't be here. 
The entire Anglican population in the world is 77 million. I'm telling you, Islam is 800 million people. So they're actually more Catholics than everybody else. But Catholic, they ask, you know why they, 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 they're always that high? Because the, the Catholic Church fights for the people. You know, they look at cases, they look at immigration, they look at empowerment, they look at diversity. And I mean, just like every human being. So for Nigeria, I think Nigeria is back hard. Almost beyond repair. I think he's on a thread. I think everybody is waiting for that Supreme Court judgment. We probably might not get to that judgment before the cookie crumble. You understand? I think the elites are actually underrating the situation. And I think for the for the uh, what I what I call the placeholder, for him to come out and talk about who and all that, it does look to me like the SSS have been telling him that the soldiers are grumbling. That you understand, because he probably would never make that kind of statement if I had not read the security report. I, they all don't know. I can see their body language. They, they two are not comfortable. They know there's fire on the mountain. The the Buari group is not happy. And you can see they arrested the military and that young boy Bauer. They dare not pick up somebody else. You understand? Even though Buari are forward from that, that country. So it's unfortunate that the country with the largest concentration of black people on the planet. One out of every four South Saharan is a Nigerian. One out of every six black people on the, on, uh, black people on the, in the world, world mm-hmm. is a total letdown. Um, I mean, for me, it's like, it doesn't even matter what happens in the future. I mean, Nigeria has messed up. We need a recalibration. I'm telling you, I, yeah. it does look to me, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not happy to say this, that it might require some semblance of violence for that recalibration to see the light of day. I it, believe so. Uh, yeah, power is not something like no, it's not. I, I believe so. And I was looking at a statistic some days back from the election. Mm-hmm. Do you know that almost all the barracks, mm-hmm. military, almost all the barracks, military and police barracks that have police stations within them, the voted Liberal Party? Yes, they did. Who won Asoro? 90%. 90%. Who won Asoro? Obi did. Obi did. I don't know. It look like it's a tribe, but people are fed up, you know? Guys, you guys have been wonderful, man. You guys have been awesome. I'm hot fun. Kenny, thank you so much. Your brother from another mother. Femu, constant, always regular. My brother from another mother. So, guys, this cup, we're bringing this to the end. We're going to call it a wrap. The second year anniversary of Atlanta. This cup. Congratulations. We did yeah, thank you. We have said that from the very beginning. <laughs> And uh, where's our shekere? <laughs> uh, Sabine Nation will drink shekere for you. Like, check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Yeah, uh, Okay, it's so not, it's not, it's not easy. I really must congratulate you because we are in podcasting too. We know how difficult it is, how challenging it is. And you have not failed, you have not failed since you started to release an episode when you are supposed to release it. Uh, so it's, I, I know what it takes to be there, to be where you are right now. So, I uh, congratulate you a lot and I look forward to greater things uh, to come with your platform. Amen. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. So, I'm going to call it a wrap. It's still Atlanta Discuss with Ade Palo. It's our first YouTube edition. It's also our second anniversary. Like I've always said, we embrace all facets of humanity to disseminate a lot of positive news in a false field with a lot of bad news. We give a voice to the other end. We balance the information equation. We search and discuss the facts wherever it needs. We discuss that thing. Atlanta discuss. Discuss the facts wherever it needs. Peace out, guys. Love you. Trust Thank me, you. I'll bring you back in less than one month for, for, <laughs> something, for something other than this. Anytime. This guy is a big me too, guys. God bless you all. Thank you. All right. All right. Champion. 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 Champion.